Welcome aboard the Screaming Serpent roller coaster. Please keep your hands and feet inside the ride at all times. Ensure your lap bar is tight and prepare to launch in 3, 2, 1. When I was a kid, I used to love theme parks. My family used to go to Wonderland Sydney once every couple of years, and I was always blown away at the incredible flat rides and especially the roller coasters. Then I'd go home and try and recreate them with my favourite toy at the time, Kinex. Kinex uses a bunch of snap together plastic parts to allow you to build just about anything you can imagine. But one thing I didn't get to build was the Kinex Scream and Serpent roller coaster, a kit that was no longer available at the time. But now, as an adult, I'm allowed to buy whatever I want. I went searching online and found a second hand Scream and Serpent, so you bet I bought it first thing. But rather than making the roller coaster by the book, reading the instructions, which is not very me, I decided rather than the conventional chain lift hill, I'm going to try and make an electromagnetic launch, which will use a linear synchronous motor that I'm going to make myself using little electromagnets, Hall effect sensors, and some clever electronics to try and launch this roller coaster as fast as I can. In my previous videos, we explored the working principles of a rotary synchronous motor. A current is passed through each electromagnet to produce a magnetic force, which pushes or pulls on the bar magnet in the center. Each electromagnet has its current reversed at just the right time to keep the rotor spinning. Now if we were to unwrap this motor and lay it flat, let's see what happens. If we prevent the bar magnet from spinning and disable gravity, we can see that the bar magnets are experiencing linear acceleration. Thus we have the linear synchronous motor. Now, how are we going to use it? Let's take a look at our roller coaster train. You can see here that the space envelope we have is quite limiting. If we mount our coils like the previous animation, it does fit, but the train will experience violent vertical oscillations as it passes over the magnets. A much smoother configuration would be to have pairs of coils mounted horizontally, and as the train passes through there will be no vertical force applied, but the coils will have to be tiny to fit in the track envelope. It might be tricky, but let's give it a try. Alrighty, let's take a look at our train and see if we can figure out how we're going to mount these magnets. If we look at the underside of the train, we can see that the running gear is secured with these little Phillips head screws. So I might pull those out and see if we can 3D print an adapter that slots in there. But before I pull the train apart, I want to figure out the pitch of the train. That's the length of each carriage. I can see 188 millimeters. If we divide that by two, then we know that the length of each car is 94 millimeters. So I want our magnet spacing to be divisible evenly by that 94 millimeters so that we can have even spacing of magnets along the whole length of our train. I think I just broke another dude. Oh, I'm bad at this. And this is what I came up with for the motor itself. It fits safely within the track envelope. The train can pass over it. And it's got mounting points for our electromagnetic coils and a mounting point for our Hall effect sensor, which will detect the train's position. This is going to take an eternity. I'll check in with you a bit later. All right, we've done 
five layers. I've gone down, up, down, up, down, and then we pop that in. Let's make another one. Now we're ready to start testing our new linear synchronous motor. I've put together a small section of straight test track, installed our synchronous motor and connected it to an ESP32 and my laptop so I can program it. Now first thing we need to do is calibrate the Hall Effect sensor so that it's switching on and off at the right time. This here is a latching sensor and if I bring this magnet close to it, you'll see a little light come on on the ESP32. Then if I switch the magnet around and present the opposite pole to the Hall Effect sensor, that light will go off. So every time a magnet passes the sensor, it will change state. If I bring our train along, you'll see once the first magnet passes the Hall Effect sensor, that light comes on. As it continues to travel, light goes off, light goes on, and light goes off as our four magnets pass the Hall Effect sensor. Now I'm going to adjust the position of the Hall Effect sensor so that it's operating at exactly the right point. And try it with some power onto the coils now and hopefully we don't burn them up, which is very easy to do. I've programmed a maximum on time of 250 milliseconds, so if the train stops within 250 milliseconds it should cut the power, so hopefully we don't cook any coils. Oop, didn't like that. Maybe I got the polarity wrong. Hopefully it's that simple. Let's try again. Oh, yes! Yes! That was awesome. Right, let's reset. That honestly worked better than I expected. Let's try it again. All right, I'm trying it at 24 volts this time, so hopefully we don't blow it up. Awesome. That's just with one set of coils and only magnets on one carriage, so I think we can definitely beef this up a little bit. I might redesign this motor here to have multiple coils, and then we've got plenty of space, so I might have multiple sets of them in series, and let's see how fast we can make this thing go. <laughs> here we have version 2 of our linear synchronous motor 3D print. As you can see, it now supports four electromagnets, and two Hall Effect sensors, one on the arrival and one on the departure end. It also has these internal ducts for cable management and ducts along the bottom to make sure the train's not going to hit the cables anymore. We have these keyed ends which lock into the Connects track connectors and some little ramps to make sure that the train always enters the synchronous motor dead straight. So I think this is a big improvement. Let's get it printing. And while that's printing, I thought I'd look online for some inspiration for my roller coaster layout. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. Set this up right here, and we'll make sure the track goes down right into the soft part of their cranium. And let's see how test number two goes. Dum dum dee dum. Oh, just here for a nice day at the. Oh no! <sighs> Let me try a different part of the internet. This one looks interesting. What's this all about? You the. <sighs> Internet, what have they done to you? Well, the print's almost finished. Guess I'll improvise. I just have to jump in here and say that this project is not going quite how I'd imagined. Take a look now at the new motor design in action. That's with the motor running at 24 volts, with the sensors in the best position and the coil sinking as much current as they possibly can without melting. I was a bit underwhelmed. I ran it again in slow motion so we can see how much speed the motor imparts on the train. 
This video is shot at 960 frames per second. The train arrives travelling at 15 centimetres per second and departs the motor at 70 centimetres per second. This is only enough speed to carry the train a few inches up the hill. So I added a second motor to the track. This time the train arrives at the motors travelling at 26 centimetres per second and departs at 240 centimetres per second. A significant boost, but the train barely reaches the vertical part of the ascent. So logically I tried a third motor, but that's when this project really started to go off the rails. I was exceeding the capacity of my power supply, so I tried powering the roller coaster from the 24 volt battery bank that normally powers my home. In an off-screen test of this setup, the roller coaster launched, but the H-Bridge power supplies failed to shut off and destroyed both themselves and my motors. I started this project over three months ago. Each one of these motors takes over a day to build and test, and the tiniest mistakes are punishing. All right, I'm about to connect the 24 volts again. Last time this blew them all up. This time, let's find out. Okay, nothing exploded. Let's try it with the full train. Here we go. I don't know if it got any higher than we got with two, to be honest, but we'll try again. I don't know if you heard that, but one of these has just begun to self-destruct. Smells like slot cards. I think that's about the best I can do. The coils are scalding hot, I'm putting as much power through them as I possibly can, and the train only goes a very short way up the hill. So I won't be able to build a complete layout that brings the train back to the start, but I'll certainly be doing another linear synchronous motor project in the future because I think it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.